You guys remember uh, the number one promise of uh, Donald Trump? Everybody knows it, right? We're going to build a wall. We're going to build a wall. At every rally he would say, and they would roar, and he'd say, who's going to pay for it? And he'd pull like wrestling moves like, and he'd be like, Mexico. Uh, well, it turns out that as soon as he got elected, on day one, uh, he decided he was going to listen to Ronald Reagan when he said this. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. <laughs> well, Mr. Trump, it looks like you don't even have to tear it down because you might not build it in the first place. Look at this, day one. Just a day after Trump's stunning election, Reuters explains, over Democrat Hillary Clinton, uh, congressional aides told Reuters the lawmakers wanted to meet with Trump's advisors to discuss a less costly option to his, quote, big, beautiful, powerful wall. All of a sudden, oh, did I say wall? I mean, maybe we could build something a little smaller. <laughs> the plan would involve more border fencing and additional border staffing with federal agents, many of whom belong to labor unions that supported Trump's candidacy, the aide said. Ah, all of a sudden he's listening to unions and people who supported his candidacy. And all of a sudden it's not a wall, it's a fence. And by the way, you know who was for a fence? Hillary Clinton. You know, they have all this kabuki theater about how much they disagree. The minute they get into office, she said fence, he says fence. I've got more of that coming up for you in terms of their secret agreements. Uh, but let's stay on this fence. They say that it'll be double layers of fencing, not a single layer, and it would be extended along parts of the roughly 2,000-mile border rather than constructing a brick-and-mortar wall, according to the proposal. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Would that have been as good a chant? Hey, and, and, and policy proposal that got everybody excited. We're going to build a fence. It's going to be double layered. Double layered, not single layered. Okay, a House Republican aide, Republican aide, and a Department of Homeland Security official said a wall was not realistic because it would block visibility for border agents and cut through rugged terrain as well as bodies of water and private land. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what we said during the election. They're like, no, no, it's not a problem at all. We're going to build a wall. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be big. Day one, uh, not a wall. Fence, you guys were right. Totally unrealistic. Okay. <laughs> My favorite uh, term out of this whole article in Reuters describing this was another way of describing the wall. It's a fence extension. <laughs> Fix your fence. Fix your fence. Okay. Now, um, if he's not doing the wall, what is he doing? What, what are his actual plans for what's going to happen in the Trump White House? Ah, it turns out, no, nah, it was all for corporate interests anyway. He did that whole populist shtick to get you guys to vote for him. So let's find out uh, who are the folks who are super excited about what's going on. If one of them turns out to be the car companies. Oh, wait, didn't we accuse, or I say we, meaning uh, the media and, and the Trump side went nuts. The Republicans all went nuts. Uh, Obama is just trying to help the car companies. Oh, that when he uh, rescued Detroit, crony capitalism. We shouldn't have rescued those guys. Let's find out what's happening on day one. We'll go to the Wall Street Journal. Mr. Trump on Wednesday signaled that future fuel economy targets developed under the Obama administration could be ripe for changes. Environmental regulators are to propose next year whether future mileage targets for automakers should be changed one way or the other. So they had done these emission standards saying, hey, you got to get more miles, uh, et cetera, right? Now all of a sudden Trump comes in and he's like, ah, I'm going to get rid of that regulation for you guys so you guys can make an extra buck in Detroit. Hey, car companies. Well, well I thought that was crony capitalism. What happened? Huh, interesting. Um, they explained fuel economy targets haven't been a main focus for Mr. Trump on the campaign trail. That's right, they haven't. So it's not like he ran on that campaign. Hey, if I get into office, first thing I'm going to do is crony capitalism for the car companies. <laughs> oh, right, that would be inconvenient if I mentioned that. He's a standard lying politician. So Trump voters, I know you couldn't stand Hillary Clinton. I get it, right? Um, but if you thought you were getting an honest guy, <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't work that way. Okay. Now, so who is really looking to benefit? Of course, multinational corporations. I thought he was running against them. He wasn't going to do the trade deals. He was going to go get them, and he was going to work for the American people, right? Oh, <laughs> let's go to the Hill. This is a third different publication reporting on different aspects of Trump's real policies. Business groups are already lining up to work with the incoming administration of President-elect 
Donald Trump. I've got a friend in the industry who said, pigs of the trough. They, they were ready, hour one. They immediately, as soon as they saw Trump was winning, they're like, oh, oh, all right, let's go to work, okay? So they explain, organizations such as the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the National Association of Manufacturers, the Financial Services Roundtable, and the National Federation of Independent Businesses are eager to capitalize on GOP control of the White House and Congress, which could make many of their policy dreams reality. The guy who spoke out against global special interests and the financial guys who are screwing us all now immediately goes to the financial lobby and says, how can I make your dreams come true? That's the real Donald Trump. I'm not even done yet. Now that Trump has won the White House, uh, corporate interests are throwing caution to the wind, according to The Hill. In other words, yummy, yummy. Ooh, if you thought we were corrupt under the Democrats, wait till you get a load of us when the Republicans control all branches of government. Okay, now, but I, come on, let's be fair. Let's be fair. There's one guy in particular that Donald Trump said we cannot have him anywhere near the government. The guy that, according to insiders, Hillary Clinton had on her shortlist for Treasury Secretary. It just uh, it drove us progressives crazy that she was considering this guy. His name is Jamie Dimon. He runs J.P. Morgan Chase. Now they had the London Whale incident where they again took too much risk. They were obviously part of the Great Crash in 2008. They're one of the largest banks in the world. Jamie Dimon is full of arrogance. The CEO says, "Oh, we've got we we don't have to worry about risk taking." And then of course a, another debacle. Uh, that uh, where they were taking too much risk, and the list goes on and on. But Hillary Clinton, she's, she's such a corporatist and such a part of the establishment, had him as one of her top choices. Oh, that's so frustrating. So I understand why you were mad. I understand why you voted against her. And Trump said on the campaign trail, quote, he's the worst banker in the United States. So at least Trump's got that going for him, and so he's going to be a populist in that. Reuters, a senior person on President-elect Donald Trump's transition team, contacted J.P. Morgan Chase and Company Chief Executive Jamie Dimon to see if he would be interested in being U.S. Treasury Secretary. Boom. That's how it works. You've been had. You've been took. He swindled you, just like any smooth-talking politician. And the minute he gets in office, the guys he called the worst of the worst, he's going to put in charge. Because it's all about the money, Lebowski. So why is he doing this? They explained, Trump's close circle of advisors includes several hedge fund executives, investors, and former bankers with whom the industry is now working to build close ties. You know, by advisors, they mean donors. So the guys who gave money for his general election run now come back around and go, hey, Donald, time to pay up. Gimme, 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 gimme. And you know what Donald Trump says? Well, let's make a deal. Remember, what did I tell you during the campaign? The people who trust him the most are the ones he swindles the most. He views you to be a sucker. So he's like, you just blindly trusted me? Great. Now I get to take advantage of you. The guys he owes favors to in the form of money, those are the ones he actually looks out for. So all that populist talk, gone on day one. Who's going to be back in charge? The multinational corporations and the bankers and the donors. Until you get money out of politics, we're never going to end this cycle, whether you're a conservative or a liberal. Get the goddamn money out so that the president who is elected doesn't have his advisors changing his mind on day one. Support independent media by becoming a member of the Young Turks at tytnetwork.com slash join.